How is everybody this morning? Thumbs medium. Thumbs up. All right. Okay. So uh, here's what we got. This morning, we're doing uh, 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off. So pretty standard interval for us at this point. A um, little bit different though, we're going to be doing 20 seconds of a weighted movement. Uh, 20 seconds of a weighted movement plus uh, 20 seconds of an unweighted movement or a body weight type movement. So uh, the first pair, I put it in the chat if anybody wants to take a look. The first pair is a goblet squat. And so you're going to do 20 seconds of a goblet squat and then 20 seconds of a body weight squat. So the difference there might be, you know, depending on the weight that you have, the goblet squat will be heavier and slower. And then once you put that weight down, you should be able to go through the movements quicker. All right, obviously that's all up to you. Um, so it's, it just depends. It's gonna be kind of like more muscular effort with the goblet squat and then a little bit more muscular burn with the body weight squat. All right, so that's the first, um, the first exercise. Second exercise, kettlebell swing uh, or deadlift, up to you. Um, We've talked about this a lot, but I always feel like it's worth mentioning the difference between the kettlebell swing and the deadlift is just the speed of the movement. Um, so the, the swing is obviously a little bit more uh, uh, aggressive, I guess. And that weight is pulling away from you, which gives some people some back issues. Um, so if that weight pulling away from you and, and sort of pulling you forward is an issue for you, just turn it into a deadlift. Um, which is basically just going to be a, a hip hinge as low as you can go. The one thing that we always talk about too is making sure that as you go down, we're thinking of hinging right from your hips, okay, right where your pockets are, not rounding over here at your low back. So we think of keeping your tailbone up, pushing those cheeks back to tap the wall behind you, and then kind of keeping your chest up in front rather than letting things round over and pull you down. Because what happens is as soon as you, as soon as you hinge from the top or as soon as you break from the top, everything starts to, to round down sort of like a, I don't know, a melting candle or something. Um, so we want to keep your upper body nice and strong. Your spine stays as one piece and you push your hips back and, and fold in half that way. Okay. Um, so that's second, third group or third pair of movements. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a kettlebell swing or deadlift paired with a glute bridge. So at the 20 second mark, we'll roll over on the ground or we'll flip over on the ground and finish with the glute bridge, which is gonna be the same muscles, just in a different uh, orientation there. Um, third one, push up position, pull through. So we're using that weight to pull back and forth under, under you in the push up position. All right, so you'll be here. And then you grab the weight and drag it over grab the weight and drag it over from the push-up position. And then from there, we'll go right to the elbow tap. So that'll be, um, you'll just lose the weight and start reaching up to tap the elbow, okay? So <clears throat> we're doing that six times through. So it's a, a little bit shorter circuit here, but there's potential for uh, a lot of work. All right, so it should, should be a total of 18 minutes. And uh, yeah, we'll go on about our day. So. Let's wrap up with the foam roll. And I'll meet you on the floor for a stretch. Okay. So starting off on your back, let's go feet up towards the ceiling. If you need to, you can give that leg a hug and drop your other heel. If not, let's try to hold, uh, just keep it there using your muscles. So we'll drop that heel down, come back up, and we alternate feet. So again, the goal here is to keep control of your hips to the point where your low back does not peel off the ground as you lower your heel. If uh, if it helps you to bend your knees, you can bend your knees. Actually on the way down, I would just bend and tap your heel to the floor, come back up. So whatever level allows you to keep control of your hips, 
Keep your low back pressed to the floor. Let's do that. Five more seconds. And good, let's cross one ankle over your knee. Okay, whatever side is not crossed up, you're gonna reach through, grab that, and pull it back in towards you for a, a stretch on your hip rotators. So you should feel this just outside your pocket, the leg that's crossed up. And we'll switch sides. And Relax. Okay. Um, Bretzel stretch today. So if you have your foam roller, that will probably help. Uh, if you don't, you can just put your knee on the floor. So we're going to take your top knee and bend it and bring it forward. All right. Your bottom hand, the hand that's on the floor, will just rest on top of your knee. Okay. Uh, and then your other hand, the hand that's closer to the ceiling, is going to reach and grab your shoelaces on the other leg. And then we open up. The goal is not to get your shoulders on the floor, although some might be able to. The goal is to keep your belly strong and open that chest up kind of uh, toward the ceiling. If you're holding here, you can also put a pillow under your head, but we don't want any twist or pinch or anything like that in your lower back. What we want to feel here is uh, a stretch on your quad, like of the, of the foot that you're holding of that leg. And then maybe a stretch through your, through your abs. Okay. It, it kind of depends on where you're tight, where you'll feel this. But the main thing we want is a quad stretch as you hold. All right, let's go to the other side. I hope you get it translated. Okay, so top leg comes forward. Again, you can rest it on a foam roller if you like. If you don't have one around, no big deal. Your bottom hand goes on top of that leg just to kind of keep it pinned down. The top, the hand that's closer to the ceiling, you're gonna reach and grab those shoelaces. And then we open up towards the ceiling. Again, your belly should be strong. Think about tucking that tailbone down. By keeping your belly strong, you're protecting your low back and keeping it stable while you rotate your upper back, which is supposed to be mobile. Feeling that quad stretch on the leg that you're uh, holding onto your foot. And relax. All right, let's go to a push-up position. So we're just going to cycle between this push-up position and a downward facing dog. So we're giving yourself a hamstring stretch here. You can spend as much time as you want in each spot, but we're always just going to push forward and up. So we do want a, a bit of a shoulder warm up here and a core warm up and a stretch down the back of your legs. So let's take 20 more seconds here, just cycling in between that push up position and the downward dog. Ten more seconds. And relax. All right, let's come up to standing. And today we'll just uh, we'll work on some lateral lunges. So we're going to step out to the side for a lateral lunge. And then you're going to come in. So we turn those hips in as you come up. All right. So uh, you're going to make kind of the letter T with your feet. 
Right, so after the lunge, you step out, you come back in, turn those feet in to make the letter T. All right, let's go about 15 more seconds on one side and then we'll go to the other side. And good, let's go to the other side. And relax, good. Okay, uh, we're ready to go here. Remember the first pair is a goblet squat paired with a body weight squat. So as soon as you finish with the weight, you'll just drop the weight. Just set the weight down right in front of you and continue with the squat. So you should feel pretty significant burn in your thighs or in your quads here. Um, but we're also getting some weighted movement out of it too. All right, so let's get going in 10 seconds. Five seconds, ready to start with goblet squats for 20 seconds. Three, two, one, and here we go. Remember, you can hold that weight low or high. It depends on how your back feels. Okay, we're gonna keep put the weight down and continue with the squats in two, one, and here we go. Weight goes down. We continue with the body weight squats. Make sure it's full depth, whatever full depth is for you. 10 seconds left. Three, two, one, and rest. All right, we got 20 seconds rest. Kettlebell swing is next, swing or deadlift. So remember your butt and back of your legs doing the work here. At the 20 second mark, we're gonna go to the floor and do glute bridges. All right, swing or deadlift, and here we go. And let's go to the floor. So right down for glute bridges, same sort of, same muscles, just bent knees now. If you have that weight, you can hold the weight on your lap or on your hips. Oops. Three seconds, two, one, and rest. All right, next pair, we're gonna stay right here on the ground for the pull through and then the elbow tap. Five seconds. Okay. And here we go. So grabbing the weight from the supported side, pulling it over to the unsupported side. Three seconds. And now we forget about the weight and just go a little bit faster and tap those elbows. You can also come up and tap your shoulder. Five seconds. And rest. All right, so that's round one out of six. We're going back up to the top. All right. In two, one, and goblet squats, here we go. Dropping the weight in one, and drop the weight. Continuing with just a little bit faster body weight squats.
Five seconds. Rest. We swing our glute bridges next. Two, one, and here we go. Five seconds. And glute bridge, here we go. Pushing those heels down through the floor. Should kind of feel the same muscles doing the work. Should feel this in your cheeks, maybe a little bit in the back of your legs. Two, one, and rest. Push-up position is next. All right, ready? And here we go. Two, one, and drop the weight. Shoulder taps or elbow tap. Five seconds. Three, two, one, and rest. All right, two down. Okay, ready, and here we go. And weight down. Five seconds, two, one, and rest. Swing is next. All right, in three seconds. And here we go, kettlebell swing. By the way, if you have a dumbbell here, you can hold it vertically, hold one end. And glute bridge, here we go. Making sure that you're not arching up towards the ceiling here. It's not about how high you get your hips about getting to the end of your hip range of motion. So that means your cheeks are gonna be squeezed, and your tailbone will be tucked under. And rest two seconds ago. Good. Rolling over to the push-up position. Two, one, and here we go. You want to challenge yourself with this, drag the kettlebell a little bit farther. So bring it well outside your body. You can also think about picking it up rather than dragging it across. And shoulder tap, here we go.
Three seconds. Two, one, rest. All right, we're halfway there. Back up to squats. Three seconds. One, and here we go. Two seconds and leave the weight on the floor. Remember through these, you're trying to keep your heels down on the floor, some weight into your shoes, squish that gel just a little bit and rest. All right, five seconds, two, one, and here we go, swing or deadlift. And glute bridge. And rest. Okay, that was round four, two to go. Back up to the top for the goblet squat. Oh, sorry, pull throughs. Just kidding. That's why I have an assistant. Five seconds. And shoulder tap, here we go. Ten seconds left. Two, one, and rest. Now we'll do goblet squats. Okay, five seconds. And here we go, weights up. Making sure we're keeping those arches nice and big. And weight down, body weight. Think about pushing that big toe down through the floor. Keep your arches nice and big. Shins parallel to each other, not caving in. Three, two, one, rest. Swing is next. All right, in two, one, and here we go. Swing or deadlift. And glute bridge.
three, two, one, and rest. So on the glute bridge, if you feel like you're not getting all the way up or as high as you should, sometimes that's okay. Don't worry about getting your hips up like parallel to your knees or anything. Keep that tailbone tucked, squeeze your cheeks at the top. All right, pull through, and here we go. Challenge here is to keep your hands under you rather than in front of you. So if you find your hands out by your face, move them back underneath your chest. And shoulder tap. Ten seconds left. Three, two, one, and rest. All right, back up to the top, last round. Ready, and here we go. Last round, right? Keep that tailbone up and out as you sit down. And weight down, body weights only. Five seconds. Three, two, one, rest. Swing is next. If you're going with the deadlift here, think about those pinky fingers tracing right down inside your knees. Coming back up. And here we go. And glute bridge. It helps you to think about peeling your tailbone off off the floor. And that's what we want. Your low back should touch the floor as you go down. And rest. Okay, last 40 seconds of work. All right, in two, one, and here we go. And drop the weight, shoulder tap. Five seconds. Three, two, one, and rest. Okay. Uh, all right. Good job, everybody. Nice group this morning. Hang on, let me uh, let me write names down before you go. All right. Okay, um, so as a reminder, for those of you who are doing the holiday hold'em, uh, we do have that question and answer with Seva on Thursday night, so like a week from last night, 7.30, 
Uh, that link will be coming out in emails and one text. So expect that. Um, but yeah, so if you have any questions, anything cooking related, anything food related, uh, jot it down this week. I, I already have a bunch of questions jotted down. So um, I don't know, I just think it's so cool to hear from pros in other industries. And uh, so yeah, they, they can really help us get more creative, uh, figure out some ingredients that maybe you aren't so sure about or haven't been so sure about in the past and uh, should be really fun. So um, hey, we're excited for that. So keep that in mind and put it on your calendar for next week if you're in the challenge, okay? All right, guys have an excellent day. I will see you tomorrow morning, Saturday, nine o'clock. Thanks, Brian. See ya. Thank you. You're welcome. Ha, ha, ha.